You say 
This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in him. I hope you're doing well and you're safe wherever you are. And we're thinking about you and praying for you. We're working on going through all the guidelines to have worship services in the sanctuary real soon for those who are ready and able. But we will also continue recording our online services for those unable or not ready yet to attend. This morning's scripture comes from Romans chapter 15, verse 13, from the New International Version. The Apostle Paul says to us, May the God of all hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. May God bless this reading of scripture. The scripture begins by saying that God is the God of hope, and hope is what we need, and that as we turn to God, he wants to fill us with joy and peace. Someone once said there's a difference between pleasure and joy, that pleasure is the pause between two pains. There's the pain of longing and wanting something, then we get what we want, we're satisfied for a little bit, and then after that, the pain returns. But joy, instead of wanting something, it's a part of us, it's something inside of us. It's a relationship, a connection with God. And Christian joy can take place no matter what is going on in the world. And the same with Christian peace. The peace that passes understanding, no matter what our situation or circumstances are, is a peace of being assured of God's presence and God's love and God's care. The scripture says that we're filled with joy and peace from the God of hope when we trust in God. And the scripture says that we will overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit of God gives us comfort and strength and guidance. The Holy Spirit is God's spirit with us when we gather together and within us when Jesus is our savior. And this Sunday is Pentecost Sunday, which celebrates the birth of the church, the time when the disciples went after Jesus was risen from the dead and ascended to heaven. They're still hiding and afraid. And then the Holy Spirit comes upon them in power. They leave their room where they're hiding, go out into the courtyards, proclaim the good news of the love of God through Jesus Christ. And they go out into all the world without fear of death and die for their belief and their need to share the love of Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. I always think about a friend I made in seminary. She was from China and we, we got to know one another and spent a lot of time together. She came from a very traditional communist atheist family. One day, out of curiosity, went to church with a friend who is a Christian and was so compelled by the love of God that she felt in the people that she met that she gave her heart to Christ and it changed the trajectory of her life from that moment on. Her family didn't talk to her for years until they as well became disciples of Jesus Christ. But the power of the Holy Spirit can change us and can change the world through us. I was thinking though, even though I am a person of faith, can we just go back and go right to 2021 and skip over 2020? Uh, but this world and this time has its challenges. Just recently, my wife and daughter and I were in three different rooms, each carrying on with an online computer meeting. My wife was in the uh, dining room and she was speaking with her fifth grade students. And in between uh, sharing with them math lessons and writing problems on a, a paper that's on our wall and giving them words of encouragement and support, she had opportunity still to use her teacher's voice. And uh, I, I had to smile. She was talking to one of the little boys. He must have come in from the backyard or from the swimming pool. And she called him by name and, and she said, you need to go and put a t-shirt on uh, for our classroom meeting. Uh, never would have thought that would happen. And our daughter was in her bedroom uh, with a college class, post-graduation, giving her something to do. The teacher was at her home in San Diego and the students were all in their homes from California to Florida. And I was in the family room uh, on an online uh, regional meeting 
And the only advantage was not fighting traffic and it's better than not meeting at all. But I must say, I do not like these meetings at all. They're nothing like being there in person and exchanging greetings and handshakes and hugs and, and words before and after and seeing facial expressions and, and just being together. But that's today. Now, as a family recently, we were absolutely heartbroken. Uh, Father's Day 2008, our daughter really wanted a dog and prayed and prayed. My wife said, no dogs, no pets. But uh, this was a true answer to prayer. On Father's Day 2008, we got two little dogs, white fluffy poodle mix dogs that grew to nine pounds and 11 pounds, brother and sister. And um, 12 years later, just recently, the little boy started breathing heavily in the night so we got in the car to go to an all-night emergency animal hospital and just a few miles down the road he stopped breathing and my wife Rena began giving Benito mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation and chest compressions and words of encouragement for the rest of the drive but he had no pain he had a really good day and and it was very sudden and unexpected and we were absolutely absolutely heartbroken uh, Rena had a special bond with Benito. Uh, whenever she was home, he was on her lap or by her side and, and uh, just gave him a, a guess. He gave her a lot of joy. He had a big personality. He was very affectionate, very loving, and very fun. And also our daughter, from her 10th year to her 22nd year, he was always uh, at her door wanting in and, and uh, read her moods during her triumphs and trials and, and gave a lot of love and affection. And each uh, night, the last thing we would do is be to tuck him and his sister in. And each morning, he'd wake up, us up with licks and kisses for 12 years. Now, we were created to form strong bonds and attachments and commitment in life. And one form of attachment or commitment for some, including everyone in the room right now, uh, can be uh, an animal and a puppy is created to be so adorable that you just can't help but bond. And also a rescue dog. A rescue dog knows how fortunate they are to be loved. And dogs, dogs give us unconditional love. They always are so excited to see us, so sad when we go. They wanna please us, they don't judge us, they don't care if we've combed our hair or, or uh, what we've done. They think we're the greatest. And they depend on us, they trust us, and we make the decisions for their care and their well-being. And appropriately, they're known as man's best friend. I was thinking years ago, I shared with the church, I was tested for allergies and was told I had an allergy to dogs. And I shared this news with my wife and with my daughter each in time. And they each said the th same thing. I said, I found out I'm allergic to dogs. And they each said, Oh, that's so sad. Where are you going to go live? Uh, well, I just take an allergy pill and we go on. I didn't have to move out. <laughs> but one of our church members, uh, just the other day, we were talking about our pets and, and their loss of their dog years before. And they were jokingly saying that they said to their spouse, it would have been easier to put down one of their adult sons <laughs> than their little dog. <laughs> jokingly, of course. but. Uh, but for many, that connection or, or bond and attachment has uh, sometimes taken place with a beloved pet. Uh, but we are created and formed to have strong bonds and attachments and commitments with one another. Sometimes that bond is, is the relationship of marriage or a child to a parent or a child to a grandparent or those attachments and bonds are with, uh, with our closest friends or other people in life that have touched us. And for many of us, those bonds are strong with members of our church family. And we're missing one another at this time. I was thinking this is the only time in life that 10 weeks have gone by where I've not made a new friend. This is the only time where 10 weeks have gone by and I've not gone to a friend's house or a church member's house for fellowship and for dinner. And if you're watching, I enjoy all dinners, all types and, and shapes. And I, I honor the host and hostess by 
eating a plate and another plate and, and another. Uh, but, uh, but it's also the first time in 10 weeks that we haven't had someone new or a new family coming to be a part of our church family. Uh, and now, even in public, people don't know that I'm smiling at them through the mask. They probably think I'm scowling or disinterested. You can't tell and, and don't know. So perhaps on the end of this, we'll appreciate the hugs and the handshakes and time of fellowship all the more when, uh, when we can do all of those things. And that day will come. But I've talked about uh, connections and commitments and attachments, sometimes for many with, with a pet, a beloved pet, and hopefully with human beings and members of your church family. But most of all, we were created to make attachments and commitment and form a bond, a loving bond and a trusting bond with God. That is what we were created for. We are created out of love by God to, to know joy and pleasure in a connection with God and life with God. The most famous verse of all in Scripture, John 3.16, tells us that God loves us. And that's why God sent His Son, Jesus Christ, into the world. Jesus came just to be with us and also to show us how to love and serve and then to die in our place and rise for our salvation and rise not only to give us new life one day in heaven, but new life right now as we live for him. And so I was thinking it took 10 plagues for, to, for God to get Pharaoh's attention long ago. And the 10th plague was by far the worst, but it didn't take long for Pharaoh to harden his heart again in disobedience to disastrous consequences one more time. Now I'm not saying that God gave us the pandemic. I, I don't know that, but I do know that God takes whatever situation we find ourselves in and uses them as an opportunity for how we respond. And uh, I hope that people are turning back to God because that will make all the difference. God wants to love us and bless us, forgive us, free us from things in the past, give us strength, and give us purpose, and touch our lives in beautiful ways beyond measure. Pentecost was a time that the Holy Spirit came upon the church in power. And as I said, the disciples went from fear and hiding to going out to all the corners of the earth to proclaim the good news of the love of God through Jesus Christ with no fear of death because they could do nothing else but share how good our God is. It's amazing how much God loves us. Rather than run to him, we often run away from him. Rather than seeking his approval, we often choose rebellion. Rather than trusting in him, we trust ourselves. But God just keeps loving us and giving us chances to turn to him. And when we do, he wants to pour so much love out upon us because all he does is wait for us to turn to him so that he can be with us and guide our lives in beautiful ways. We worship an amazing God. You are on my mind and in my heart and remembered in my prayers until that time we can meet again. But until that time, remember, we're called to connect with one another. It's more challenging now, but you can still call and write and email and, or uh, drive by, honk a horn and wave through the window or knock on the door and run away to the sidewalk where it's safe. <laughs> Leave a package, uh, whatever, depending on how your loved one feels and how comfortable they are. But uh, we're connected and created for connections with one another. And a strong connection is as a church family. We love each other and serve together and, and joke and have fun and, and live life. But don't forget most of all, that connection with God. It'll see you through this time and it'll see you through a wonderful life with meaning and purpose of service until that time we go to be with our Heavenly Father. Be safe and be well. Amen. <laughs>